Mr. Neely Fuller Jr. by phone. Mr. Neely Fuller Jr. is a D.C. resident, longtime activist and scholar. And Mr. Fuller, we want to welcome you as the author of United Independent Compensatory Code, a textbook workbook for victims of racism, white supremacy. It's also just known as the code. Mr. Fuller, good morning to you. Good morning. How you doing this morning? I'm still learning. <laughs> All right, but right. well, we, so we, we are too. We are too. So please begin us with your famous quote from this book about white supremacy. Uh, well, the basic quote that I have in the front of the book, uh, textbook for victims of racism, is if you do not understand white supremacy, which is racism, what it is and how it works, everything else that you understand will only confuse you. Thank you very much. I want to move right into the conversation that we were having earlier in the context of this uh, murder or killing out in Baltimore and the killings across the U.S. that we're seeing by the police against African people. You discuss within your book the nine basic areas of people activity, and one of them is war and warfare. How would you explain how warfare fits into white supremacy and the attacks on black people by these white cops and black cops? Well, it's not just uh, uh, cops as such. Actually, I have a different uh, way of expressing what is going on. Uh, actually, police officers do not do unjust harm to people. Police officers do not mistreat people. Race soldiers do. Now, what is a race soldier? A race soldier is a person who is a white supremacist acting like he's a police officer or she. Might be a he, might be a she. But they are imposters. They are not police officers. We need to change the language so that we don't lump everybody all in the same uh, uh, category. And uh, because there are people who are trying to do police duties, which is protect and serve or whatever it is that they contracted, they made a contract to do. Now, but a white supremacist has one agenda, and that's to be a white supremacist. And white supremacists are any white person, is any white, a white supremacist is any white person, male or female, who believes in and who practices white supremacy by doing what? By trying to dominate or continuing to dominate people who are classified as non-white and in that domination mistreating the people. That's what racism is for. Racism is about mistreatment. It's not just about being proud of something or your color or your height or your weight or anything like that. It's about mistreatment. If you are racist, you believe in mistreating people. That That's your whole reason for being. Dominating and mistreating people based on color. But Mr. Fuller, one question I would have is, is how do you distinguish between a police officer and the imposter race soldiers you describe them when, given the context we're in, wouldn't the entire institution of police be race soldiers is there is it possible in this context to not be a race soldier and be in the police or in the military uh, extending that no no it's uh it's not impossible but every victim of racism should suspect that any white person wearing a badge and a gun may be and i want to underline may be may be a white supremacist so when you see them coming you consider yourself already a prisoner of war. It's not like you're being captured. You've already been captured because you're in a world system of white supremacy anyway. You're already in prison. All black people on the planet Earth are already in prison. Now, when we are put in what we call something that we call a prison, jail, a stockade, uh, some type of uh, prison camp, you might say, this is what, in my book, I define as greater confinement. You're already confined just by being on the planet, if you have color in your skin. 
because the world government is the system of white supremacy. You're born in that system. White people and black people, all non-white people and all white people are born in the system of white supremacy because that's the only government on the planet. According to what? According to the evidence and according to logic. Now, there are people who will say, oh, no, that's absurd. Uh, that That's not true. There's all kind of governments on the planet. No. You either have white supremacy or you don't. There's no such thing as white supremacy being in one place and not being in every place. Otherwise, it couldn't be supreme. Most of the world is classified as non-white. Most of the people on the planet. So you either have white supremacy or you don't. I claim that you do. Now, that claim is either true or false. There's no wiggle room in between. And so I'm saying that if you are classified as a black person, when you see a person with a badge and gun coming and that person is white, that person most likely may be a racist. And you are already captured. Now, in a war, when you run from a soldier, a race soldier, or any other kind of soldier in a war, and we are in a war, that soldier will shoot you. Now, if you don't expect that, then you haven't been educated in the world that you're in. That's a given. We shouldn't keep silly shouting and playing with that. I mean, thinking that you have the privilege to say, man, you ain't telling me nothing, I ain't going nowhere, take these cuffs off me, I'll do this and whatnot. No, you ain't got no right to do this. I got my rights. I know my rights. No, 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 no. You're a prisoner of war. A prisoner of war, if he heads for that fence or she heads for that fence, and when I say fence, I mean just running. Just running. Expect death. D-E-A-T-H. And if you don't, you don't know the world that you're in. That you don't know the reality. We have to be real. We have to stop playing. Like this is some kind of schoolyard game. This is not. This is absolute war. And you have to consider yourself a prisoner of war if you're wearing black in your skin or any uh, non-white shades of black. That Brown, lady- red, yellow. Because we're in a system of white supremacy. Now, either the statements that I just made are true or they are false. That, ladies and gentlemen, is Neely Fuller, the legendary legendary Neely Fuller right here at our Mix What I Like, WPFW 89.3 FM. The full I Mix What I Like crew is on deck. Doctors Burroughs and Hate are on board. Mike Nacella is running the boards and the legendary DJ RBI is making sure everything sounds as good as it does. And that's why it does sound as good as it does. And we're going to continue this conversation, of course, uh, uh, right now, actually. And then we're going to segue in a few moments to uh, the Dyson and West controversy. Still a lot to be said about that. And we intend to at least say some of that. But, yeah, let's let's, let's continue. Professor Fuller, I wanted to ask about... Um, hold on. Mike's okay. I wanted to ask about uh, what would be the behavior of black people if you're saying we're in this particular situation. Then what should be our behavior, not just our our uh, defense, but our offense? Oh well, you don't really have an offense under those conditions. If we're talking about uh, when someone approaches you with a badge and gun and that person is classified as white in the system of white supremacy, and that person may be, may be a race soldier, you're at a disadvantage. You're standing there with nothing in your hands. All you got is the ability to speak, which when you do, you should say as little as possible. That's your defense. And when you're told to do something, do it. Do it. So that you can at least breathe until the next day. We're talking about I can't breathe. Well, don't do anything to, to, to provoke them. Just make you stop breathing. Consider yourself as not having any rights at all at that moment. Now, if you're going to say something about your rights, say that later. Because most likely at this point, 
they will give you your ability to say something in court or have your lawyer do so. Hopefully that will work out. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. But one thing that definitely isn't going to work out, if you start wrestling and tussling with a suspected race soldier in a system of white supremacy, that's not going to work in your favor, and the record shows this. And no matter how many protests people make, how many marches people make, it'll temper it for a while. But you can pick up any newspaper going back to 1900 or whenever. Just pick out any year. Any Kansas City Call newspaper, a Chicago Defender, a Pittsburgh Courier. And you see what? In one or two of the headlines, Negro killed by white police officer. Memphis, Tennessee. Detroit, Michigan. Buffalo, New York. Cincinnati, Ohio. And on 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 into infinity. And this is 2015. And you still see the same thing. Because we don't understand the system we're in. Many of us. Some of us do. But not enough. This is not a schoolyard game. This is not some tussle between guys on the football field who are having a little dispute. This is war. We need to act like it's war. When somebody says in World War II, Octung, I'm a member of the SS, and I'm knocking on your door, consider yourself dead. Because that's where you are. That applies to millions of dark-skinned people throughout the planet. That's where we are in 2015. We need to act like it. Stop well, thinking we have some rights. We don't. Not when it comes to the right to breathe. Baba Full, I want to switch tracks, um, and I thank you very much for the sobering elderly wisdom that you're sharing with us. I want to switch tracks because your code book is really geared towards understanding how to contextualize and, and make sense of this world that we live in. And you also have a section where you're talking about the don'ts. Essentially, you give your rules for ma'at in this country for black people to live by. So stop doing these things. And one of the things that you talked about was stop squabbling and trying to have beefs that are then settled by white people. And in this discussion we're about to get into, um, you know, we wanted to have you on today. And before we knew everything that was going to be covered, it was perfect uh, synchronistic timing, because now you can help us understand this um, academic battle between a Michael Eric Dyson and Cornell West and Dyson's use of the New Republic to attack West, who has used the New York Times to attack African people before that. It's so many chickens coming home to me. <laughs> But I just want to ask the you, chickens. I just want to ask you, how do we make sense of this squabble between Dyson and West using your code book? Oh, I don't know anything about that squabble. <laughs> I haven't heard anything about it. So essentially, two scholars of mm -hmm. um, fame and infamy, depending on what circle you roll in, um, have now called each other out. Um, Michael Eric Dyson has said something about Cornell West after Cornell West has said something about Michael Eric Dyson in relation to his uh, obedience towards the Obama machine. And given a sense of your work, what is the responsibility of black people to each other in resolving our beefs outside of white spaces? Oh, well, what I have written in the uh, textbook for victims of white supremacy there's something called VGQ. Now, what is VGQ? Victims Guaranteed Qualification. Victims of what? Victims of white supremacy. And what is that guaranteed qualification? You're guaranteed the qualification as a victim of saying anything that you want to say about race, racism, or counter-racism. Now, that's, that's something that we should assume on our own, not wait for anybody to give us a license to do so. Why? Because if you're a slave, you should be able to say anything about slavery that you want to say. And any approach that you take is valid. Why? Because no one has done away with slavery. I mean, racial slavery, the system of white supremacy. 
So anybody's opinion can be valid since no one has ever come up with a formula for eliminating the system of white supremacy, this thing we call racism. Because racism is the only, uh, white supremacy is the only form of functional racism. From an ideological viewpoint, you might uh, have other forms of racism. But functionally, you have only one white supremacy, and you can't have another supremacy when you have white supremacy. So white supremacy is the only form of functional racism that exists on the planet today. And the victims of it have a guaranteed qualification of saying, I'm talking about speech now, anything that he or she chooses to say about race, racism, or counter-racism. And I, like Neely Fuller, according to this BGQ law, a law which we make for ourselves, I'm not qualified to criticize anything that any other non-white person says about race, racism, or counter-racism. Why? Based on logic. Because I haven't conquered racism myself. See, the only thing that would qualify me to go around saying that other black people can't say this and can't say that and shouldn't be saying this and shouldn't be saying that, I can give my opinion of what is being said, but as far as attacking the person, what qualifies me to do that? None. Why? Because I haven't come up with a formula for ending racism. Racism still exists. The only experts on white supremacy are the white supremacists themselves. Any black person who says that he or she is an expert on white supremacy is not telling the truth. Because you've got to know a whole lot and understand a whole lot. I think it's... I think it's have perfectly. A big, uh, to, to know everything that there is to know about an operation called the system of white supremacy. I think it's perfectly logical that that Mr. Fuller is saying he does not uh, he's not aware of that debate between West and Dyson. I think it makes perfect sense given you know his analysis and what you've just said there. Uh, 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 in addition to that, I think it's perfectly logical that, and it applies what he just said applies to both Dyson and West. Which I love also, personally speaking. Yeah. This is how sound the system is. <laughs> so the, the one question that I wanted to ask is what you were just leading towards is what is the purpose of our activities as African people in this space and time that we're in? What should we be geared towards? We should be, uh, we should come up with what is missing. The one thing that we haven't ever institutionalized and that is a counter racist code that's why i wrote my book i'm trying to start have the beginning at least of a frame of reference for a counter racist code why the yin and yang the races have a code but by the time the average white person on this planet is around 15 years old i would say estimated worldwide they are well-versed in the racist code. They make mistakes, but as they grow and evolve and observe the world around them, and they're already in the system of white supremacy, and they are white people, they're classified as white, so they just, by osmosis, just pick up what they're supposed to be doing and not supposed to be doing as a white person in the system of white supremacy. So about the time they're 25, they know just about what to say, what not to say, what to do, what not to do, as a white person in a system of white supremacy. This is why you have, from generation to generation, a system of white supremacy that is well in place. They pick it up, not by anybody that's come and say now, you know, people telling them blatantly every day, now you're supposed to be on your J-O-B, on your job as being a white supremacist, no, they just look at the way the world works around them. And they just blend in, like just follow the crowd. And black people follow the crowd as victims of white supremacy. I mean, you know, because it's already in place. It's already institutionalized. Now, so you have a white code, meaning what is a code? It just means a way of doing things and not doing things. 
That's all a white supremacist does. And, and the average white person is not going to violate the white code. That's why you still have white supremacy. Mr. Fuller, we're going to ask you to hold there for a quick second right, and let sir. folks know that this is I Mix What I Like here at WPFW 89.3 FM. And in the few minutes we have left, we're going to, we're going to turn them over here briefly to DJ RBI and come back and talk a little bit more about Dyson and West with, with Professor Fuller. And just very quickly, I just, just, just very quickly, we only have a couple of minutes left. I just want to make a couple quick points about this Dyson West piece. First of all, I've been enjoying it immaturely, I will admit publicly, because I've had issues with both of these <laughs> Cats. And I've never liked Cornell West more than after watching this whole thing with Dyson, which I think is a, just a, a disingenuous uh, attack trying to, as Glenn Ford wrote in this week's Black Agenda Report, reposition uh, Dyson for the Democratic Party and Hillary coming forward. He does almost everything that he claims West has done in terms of poor academia, just re republishing transcriptions of interviews and all these other kinds of things. And he went on the Mark Steiner show in WEAA yesterday and I think was very disingenuous when he argued that the only reason he did this in the New Republic, given its checkered past, to say it politely, when covering race, is that there is no black equivalent news magazine that he could go to. And what, what, what I think he's really saying, quite honestly, is that no black outlet exists that could pay him the fee he got, whatever it is, to have published 10,000 words in the New Republic and taken a year, he said, to write that piece. Or that has the elite audience that what, he wants. Exactly. Exactly. So, Dr. Burroughs, please give us the context for this Dyson West B for those who do, don't know. We don't really have the time, so I'll just say, to quote Highlander, there can be only one. <laughs> And because you are one of the preeminent Mumia scholars and journalists, we just also want to say shout out to Mumia Abu-Jamal. It's his birthday today. We're going to continue to, to ride with him and support him and make these calls for him to get his health checked out. Uh, so solidarity, all of them, prisonradio.org, bring Mumia, at bring Mumia home and many other uh, outlets covering this. And, and we, we stand in solidarity. But given that context, yeah. though, the timing of it can't be disconnected no, to the fact no. that Cornell West has been riding for Mumia. That's right. And making sure that he gets the appropriate health care, the doctor of his choice, the food and nutritional values of his choice. Meanwhile, he's in prison. And I mean, and this is consistent. one of the problems with what Dyson did. Yeah. There was no specific reference to all the things West has argued that would make him so angry at Dyson and his friends for not uh, uh, for continuing to support Obama in this 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 warlike presidency. And Cornell West has been very consistent in his support for Mumia, even going Absolutely. to the 1995 uh, hearings when he was had an execution date. Absolutely. So he's been very consistent. But now it's it's curious because if we talk top five. Of the scholars, as Dyson set up, is is Cornell West still top five? That's really what the argument That's was really about. What it was. It should have been a you know an academic top five. He also should have never mentioned Oliver Cox. He had no right to Dyson did to mention Oliver Cox in his list of prominent uh, scholars, uh, from which from out of which the grace from which West has now fallen. Um, uh, Oliver Cox is so superior to all the people he mentioned, including Randall Kennedy, who took a shot at us last week, a couple weeks ago in Boston Review. And a very weak shot. A weak, a unsubstantiated These cats shot. are silly, man. I mean, but we, won't talk... Anyway, anyway, anyway. Let's just keep the beef focused for a focused. second. Because <laughs> it's curious, though, right? Go ahead, Dr. Well, no, I'm just saying the world is preparing for Manny and Pac-Man, and we're preparing for Manny. next week. You know? <laughs> right. Yeah, it's, Mayweather. It's, it's fight night all summer long. This is also part one with Neely Fuller Jr. And yes, the argument absolutely. really absolutely. centers around West saying that Dyson has prostituted himself yes. to gain entrance into the White House. Yes. And what Dyson is saying is, you sound like a scorned ex-lover mm -hmm. to Cornell West, using that Congreve quote that hell hath no fury That's like right. a woman scorned, or the Tyler Perry version, hell hath no fury. So I'm not sure <laughs> if this is a classic et tu brutish Shakespearean betrayal of the father and the son, or the mentor mm. and the professor. Or is this just a really chicken wing Sunday afternoon matinee play? Lord, why can't I be the number one scholar in this field? We got to say also that in response to Dave Zirin on that same radio show I mentioned a moment ago, Dyson said D Zirin had a lot of good points, except his analogy was backwards in that in his analogy of comparing West and Dyson to Ali Foreman, Dyson's supposed to be Ali, Dyson said, that he's the one that's been taking these shots from West over the years and came back and knocked him out with this piece in the New Republic. Similarly, he took the positive reference in comparison to himself as Nas versus Jay-Z, saying that he ethered Cornell West. 
Now, we know none of these folks have been a favorite, and they've all been candidates for Hated of the oh, Year man. Award. And Check so this, this is a wonderful moment <laughs> where two of the folks that you like see go at each other are actually having a moment where they got to deal with each other. So it's not really any more Mike Dyson attacking Bill Cosby or Cornel West attacking right. the African Center movement. It's really like who's going to be the head white house Negro, mm. and, pun intended. And you know, Dyson came to prominence in a 1992 piece in Emerge uh, attacking African Center thought. Uh, That's right. He's called Melanin Madness. That's right. So it gives you an idea who he was critical of. So in this case, I mean, both of these cats got legs up in their career for attacking Afrocentrists <laughs> to the extent that I... I <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. I mean, Sorry. I mean. Sorry. They climbed the corporate ladder. <laughs> That, that, that would be a more radio-appropriate yes. uh, way to, to oh say that. <laughs> we don't have a pause button. A pause button <laughs> right. In here. Uh, right. We needed a pause button on that one. Right. Um, now, all of this confusion centers <laughs> yeah. around West trying to ride for Obama initially and then not getting the ticket to the White House. So right. Dyson is saying, because you didn't get invited to the prom and I did, you now bitter and you're going to hate on a prom queen and king. Right. So I want to ask... We have Neely Fuller with us still on the line. I want to ask Mr. Fuller, how has this moment of confusion around the president in the White House being a black person then confused all black people in the system of white supremacy? Now, the question is, how? What now? How has the president of the White House, the president of the U.S., this black family in the White House confused black people according to your understanding of white supremacy oh well for one thing uh president obama is not in charge of anything so for people to attack him attacking him for what he's not in charge of anything the white supremacists are in charge of every black person on this planet including the obama family if you understand white supremacy, you understand that. There are, there are no so-called black presidents and black leaders anywhere. All of the leaders of black people are white. White supremacists specifically. Those white people who have chosen to participate in the system of white supremacy are the leaders of all of the black people on this planet. Now, what do you have among black people? You have black spokespersons. What is a black spokesperson? A black spokesperson is a person that speaks. I'm a black spokesperson. Why? Because I'm speaking right now. Every black person who speaks is a black spokesperson. And every black person who is speaking, regardless of where he or she may be, Congo, Cameroons, Mali, any place, they are just speaking. But the decision makers for all of black people on the, in the system of white supremacy, which is worldwide, are white when the decisions are made. I often give an illustration, and Mr. I've done Fuller, this before. Mr. I, I, Mr. Fuller, I, we hate to do this. We really have to interrupt you, unfortunately, because we got to get out of here. Our time is cut. We will definitely like to have you back with us uh, and continue this conversation, maybe even next week if it all can be worked out. Uh, you know, we, we would definitely want to have that uh, cont conversation continue, but we got to run. And, and my apologies on behalf of the whole crew for that. Yes, sir. So we want to thank Mr. Neely Fuller. We want to thank DJ RBI, Mike Nacella, all of you for listening. Happy birthday to Mumia Abu-Jamal. Shout out to all the people struggling out there in Baltimore and the rest of the country and the rest of the world. I mix what I like .org for more. At I mix what I like on all your relevant social media to continue the conversation. DJ RBI, take us out of here. Peace if you're willing to fight for it. As Fred Hampton used to say, we'll catch you in the whirlwind. Peace, everybody.